Hey guys, welcome back and thank you for tuning in once again. On our episode today, we are going to dive into the realm of homemade black powder. Now, when you mention to uh, reenactors, living history enthusiasts, black powder shooters that you're thinking of uh, making your own homemade black powder as opposed to buying it, uh, you tend to be met with a lot of surprised looks. People think you're a little bit goofy in the head. And then uh, stories start coming at you about some good old boy somewhere that tried to make some kind of homemade gunpowder and blew himself up or blew his house up or blew his garage up or something. And I'm not trying to discount the caution, but just like anything in life, there is a very wrong and dangerous way to go about making black powder. And there is a very safe and right way to go about doing it. And as long as you stick to the safety parameters that I'm going to outline on the video today, uh, you'll be fine. Um, you know, some people feel like, well, it's dangerous, so you shouldn't be doing it. Well, there's a lot of things in life that are dangerous that we all do every day. For instance, uh, we live in central Ohio here, 45 minutes to the west is capital city, Columbus. Now, for anyone who's ever driven on the elder, outer belt of that city at rush hour, even in the evening or morning, it's very dangerous. And if you're not very careful, you could end up severely hurting yourself, others, or possibly even uh, causing someone or yourself to die. To state the obvious, what I'm trying to correlate here, if you do that same thing with black powder, you will be fine, I promise. And uh, there, again, there are things that you do and you don't do, and the process is fine. So, um, to make homemade black powder, it's the same basic recipe that has been used for hundreds of years that everyone knows the Chinese invented. And it's the recipe, if you're going to dive into the realm of making your own, that uh, we're going to use here today. And the basic recipe, and it's the one that I use, is 75% potassium nitrate. 15% charcoal and 10 to 11% sulfur. Now I say 10 to 11% because that slight little increase, some people have found um, the powder ignites faster. That's what you're going to try and obtain when you make your own. You want stuff that is lightning deadly fast. If you try a little pile of commercially made powder like GoX and ignite it, it flashes instantly. And that's what you're trying to get your homemade stuff to do. And it is possible as long as you make it in the correct fashion. So uh, those are the basic ingredients that you use. And um, where to get all those things? Um, surprisingly, it's easy to obtain all those things. Go off camera for a second. This is pure sulfur powder. All ingredients that you're going to get, you want to warm uh, excuse me, you're going to want to make sure that they are pure, there's no additives. This is pure sulfur powder. You can find it at garden supply uh, stores around the country. You can buy it online. Uh, I think I paid like $10 for a three pound bag. So sulfur. Potassium nitrate, the same way. It's a plant fertilizer and you can buy this again garden supply stores online. One thing most people don't know this, but uh, at Lowe's or Home Depot, Spectricide Stump Remover that you can buy comes in a uh, 16 ounce bottle. That is pure potassium nitrate, and I've made several batches of gunpowder using this stuff. Works just the same as buying it in bulk, and you can get several pounds of powder out of one of these. So if you got a Lowe's or Home Depot, you can obtain this. And charcoal just as the name implies charred wood you can buy this but typically the stuff you make at home and I would recommend you make your own charcoal is going to outperform the stuff you can buy uh, types of charcoal that work well for black powder the number one that everybody says is the best is willow charcoal but that's kind of hard to obtain because those trees typically grow for decoration so unless you find somebody that is having one of those removed out of their yard. That can be a little hard to get. Um, you want to stick with softwoods typically. Pine works very well. Uh, cedar works very well. And you can buy the pet bed chippings, pine or cedar, and char those. That works very well. Um, also, which I have found in the last batch I made that's been my best batch yet, I used grapevine. Get the grapevine, find the ones that are dead. 
Uh, the little offshoot vines typically are 3 8 to a half inch. Snap them up and uh, load a container with those, and that works very well. And it's cheaper than uh, buying your own charcoal. So um, some tools that you're going to need to do this, they're pretty basic, but you're going to need a kitchen scale that you can measure these ingredients out because they are by weight. Uh, so some kind of a mixing container. This is just a simple plastic cup. Some little scoops come in handy for pulling the raw ingredients out. And then I have my recipe written down here. Now to get back to the recipe real quick before we go into more tools. Um, <clears throat> again 75 percent potassium nitrate, 15 percent charcoal, 10 to 11 percent sulfur. Um, and that is a ratio to whatever you want it to be. If you want to start with, say, you're using grams for measurements and start with 100 grams and then do your breakdown that away or whatever. Uh, I'm using ounces because the scale that I have is just a cheap one and uh, it has the ounces on there, so I went with that. So if you're wondering, uh, the ratio that I use, it is it's uh, a breakdown from 8 ounces, which will give you a half a pound of powder. It is uh, 6 ounces of potassium nitrate. Uh, 1.2 ounces of charcoal and 0 0.80 ounces of sulfur but and that's the basic recipe that I use now some people like to put an additive into that called dextrin and basically it's an emulsifier or thickener it just helps the powder granulate better or clump together better which is important for um, one of our later steps if you're planning to shoot this powder out of a firearm I would not recommend using dextrin because it fouls up very, very badly. Um, it's hard to clean and for firearms it's not a very good mix. If you want to use red gum, which you can obtain from pyrotechnic supply houses and it's the, the bark of a certain type of tree that grows in Australia, that works well. Um, I use a product called Quebracho Bark, and that is the inner bark of a tree that grows in South America. I buy it in a powdered form, and I will put a little shot of that into my mix, uh, about a half a teaspoon, and then when I am uh, kneading the lump of black powder, which I'll show you later in our video, put another half a teaspoon, and that helps the powder stick together and granulate much better. Um, so if just a few words on safety. Uh, obviously you want to practice common sense. You don't want to be making gunpowder around uh, heat, sparks, things of that nature. Keep it away from kids, all that. Um, but the biggest thing, and this is what I tell people why this uh, procedure is safe. Want to wear eye protection when you're doing it, goggles, but you mix your powder in small proportions, okay? Um, I've never made more than half a pound at a time and I've even cut that recipe down again. So making half of that amount, four ounces is what you'll end up with or if you want to do a little more, eight ounces. Um, typically people that have injured themselves, they're breaking some sort of safety rule. They're doing, they're adding something, they're working around something that could ignite the powder or they're making huge batches, you know. If a batch of eight ounces flashes, and it can only do that at the very end of the process because these ingredients mixed together raw will not do that. They have to be milled. Um, you'll get some singed eyebrows, maybe some burns, but it's not going to explode. That small amount and the way that we make it, it's uh, relatively safe. I say relatively because, you know, I can't guarantee somebody wouldn't have a mishap with it. But if it would flash, it's not going to level your garage or uh, you know blow your hands off or anything like that it's just gonna produce a fireball and lots of smoke so um, with that in mind I will go ahead and show you some of the tools that we use to do this and continue on with the process okay so one tool you are going to have to get and invest in if you want to do this and do it properly uh, hand mixing black powder it doesn't really work you need what's called a ball mill or a rock tumbler, which is what this little deal is. And it's nothing more than a small little motor that gently tumbles a canister. And one thing that makes this process safe 
is the fact that this little motor spins at a very, very low RPM, only like 70 RPM, and it's just gently rotating this mill around. Uh, the canister itself is rubber, so there's no danger of sparks or overheating. And what I have in there are about 50, 60 caliber lead round balls. You want to use lead or some people use marbles. And again, they will not spark, they will not overheat. And this is what you're going to put all your raw ingredients in to tumble. And what it's going to do is it's going to take your raw ingredients and basically turn them into a talcum powder. Okay, so to start, I've got a small fire burning here. I'm going to take our canister, and this batch is going to be all grapevine. So that's the grapevine just broken up in small pieces. And I'm leaving the bark on there. Just load the pot up. And you want to fill it. That one's a little bit tough. Fill it to about three quarters of the way up. Load the whole thing. All right, so that's all we're doing when we make the... Uh charcoal it's just cooking away on the fire there uh, you want to make sure that the lid is on nice and tight so that the contents can't ignite and it takes anywhere depends on what kind of wood you're using anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes to do a batch and you see the smoke pouring out of there and rotate it occasionally let it cook on the uh, bottom there for a while roll it over on its side for you know every 10 minutes or so you'll know it's done when the smoke stops coming out of the top hole there and when it is done, get it off uh, the fire with a couple of pieces of wood. Obviously it's hot. Set it aside and make sure you plug the hole right away with a whittled down stick so that no oxygen can get to your charcoal. And about 10 minutes set aside and it's cool enough to handle. Don't open it until the uh, outside is completely cool to the touch. You don't want your charcoal to reignite when it's reintroduced to air. But uh, that's all you're doing. And it makes great charcoal for use in homemade black powder. So we'll let this cook and I'll show you the finished product. Alright so this is the finished product. This is a smaller batch that I did earlier of the uh, grapevine. It's been all charred down real nice. You'll know it's uh, good stuff when you can just break it right in half. No trouble. It's charred all the way through. And I don't know if you can see on camera. You probably can't. But one reason that uh, grapevine works so well is it's a very porous wood. If you look very closely at the end it's full of little holes and that uh, one theory is that why it works well is that enables all the ingredients to intermix because that's what you really are trying to do to get all the ingredients to intermix become one solid molecular piece and then that will in turn make good quality and fast shooting gunpowder. So uh, now that we've got our charcoal we'll go ahead and uh, measure out our ingredients and move on to the next step. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add our raw chemicals now for our black powder mix. Uh, this particular mix is set up in ounces and this will make you eight ounces of black gunpowder. The recipe is six ounces of potassium nitrate, 1.2 ounces of charcoal, and 0 0.80 ounces of sulfur um, you can bump the sulfur up a hair if you want. As I said earlier, it tends to make the gum powder, in some cases, just a hair faster. So we'll go ahead and uh, set up to get these mixed. This is just a cheap kitchen scale digital. Our little mixing cup there. We'll zero it out. And first thing we'll do is the potassium nitrate. So we're going to do six ounces and these chemicals are not dangerous till this is milled and these are all blended together very very finely if you were to put all these together and try and ignite it and you're expecting a flamp or an explosion you'd be disappointed would not work so there we go so six ounces of potassium nitrate. We have our ball mill with our lead milling balls or media down in there. So potassium nitrate in. Back on the scale. Zero it out. And now we're going to do 
1.2 ounces of charcoal. It takes a fair amount of charcoal to do this because charcoal hardly weighs anything. And I ground this up a little bit with the head of a large hammer just to help the ball mill a little bit as it's milling. Two charcoal goes in. Back on the scale, zero it out. And now we'll do our sulfur. And we're looking for 0.8 ounces, approximately. Too much. Take some of that out. Yeah, a little bit of extra is not going to hurt. So our sulfur goes in. And then I put a little shot of this clay braccio bark again as kind of a binder or an emulsifier. You can also use red gum for this. You don't have to do it, by the way, but. I've been doing it as of late. It seems to make the powder grain a little better. So I'm not even measuring that. I'm just eyeballing it. It's probably half a teaspoon, maybe a little more. We'll get our lid on our ball mill now. Canister. ready to go mill our powder. Stay tuned. Okay, so we are ready to mill this powder now and we are out here in my little makeshift concrete bunker. Uh, arguably this is the most dangerous part of the process, but again, it's I'm just saying that so you'll be cautious. If the powder can't overheat or there's not a spark of some type generated, uh, chances of detonation are zilch to none. So, but you do want to do this outside. Um, do not do it in your basement, do not do it in your garage, you know, well away from buildings. I've run an extension cord from my shop out here and it's uh, behind a wood pile and then this little stack of concrete bricks with the front open just in case uh, we are safe. So this is going to get turned on. I'll switch it on just so you can see it run. You can see it just barely turns very, very slow. And that's all you need. Uh, it takes a while with these small slow tumblers. To get good black powder this will have to tumble uh, 24 perhaps even 48 hours we'll just see. You know it's done when the powder is sitting down below and all the grinding balls are on top. So in other words if I stop this turn it upright open it up that powder is down below it and the balls are sitting on top, it's milled fine enough. And it'll be milled just as fine as talcum powder. Uh, if you stop prior to that, uh, the ingredients generally are not fine enough or well mixed, and it will make poor functioning powder. So at this point, it's uh, put it to bed. I'll usually cover this with a tarp just in case it rains, and just let it tumble and probably check it tomorrow and see what we got. So we'll see you then.